Val Carlson. I've been with Checkpoint for 20 years, um, and I have uh, created and managed for the last year and a half a program called Hacking Point. Hacking Point is another division of Checkpoint's education services uh, that is designed to, um, to provide some training and certi certification on uh, cybersecurity um, topics, completely vendor agnostic. We don't talk about checkpoints, solutions, and checkpoints, um, um, products, and uh, technology in general. We just simply talk about the threats and provide. We have eight courses. Um, that we um, we have on our um, portfolio at the moment. We're constantly working on adding more courses uh, that can be learned and certified through Checkpoint. We handpicked a company uh, that does the training here at Black Hat. Name of the company is Not So Secure. Um, they're the number one the, they're the number one rated trainer for Black Hat, and they actually. Uh, provide the courses, written the courses for us, and provide the courses, train our um, delegates. And these are these are like on like these are classroom courses. These are actually remote classrooms. Okay. Uh, we are looking into more uh, learning methods, right. such as the methods you guys carry with self-paced learning. Right. And. Um, Basically, our belief is more and more people are choosing to get uh, trained and certified from their homes and their offices and not travel across the globe in order to get certified. Nice. Um, with, like for the whole creation of these courses and things, I assume it was like a customer need. There was like people were asking for these courses on how to like basically best use your products, but understand how your products better play probably in the organization. Exactly. We kind of figured out that in order to be a good protecting person or a protecting technology uh, employee, you need to know more about the threats. And the more you know about the threats, the better of a protector or the protecting role, right. your protecting role is going to be better fulfilled. Yeah, you can have a Lamborghini, but if you don't, you don't know how to drive, Right, interact on the road. That's you know, a really, really yeah. good comparison. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So we yeah. see, we actually see that a lot at Cyberary. Um, mm -hmm. We're actually starting to see a bunch of people that are kind of opening up the training because we have a bunch of like general courses, like over, like overviews and things like that, and they're starting to kind of share those out to other people, like help desk IT people and a bunch of other people outside the IT organization, just to kind of get them aware of things to kind of raise the security posture baseline up just a little bit. I actually um. completely agree. It's no longer only for the SOC uh, right. person and for a person that is dealing directly with the security of an er the organization. Right. It could be all the way from sales engineers to help desk personnel right. and quite a thick layer of people within the organization, not only the SOC. Yeah, and uh, one of these interesting things we've had discussions about is like, when does it stop becoming like security, like something you're doing to secure your platform or anything, your office, anything like that? And when does it just become part of your job description that like that's what you do? And I think we're finally starting to get to that point where people kind of start to realize like, oh, like this is normal. Like you asked like 10 years ago, people have been like, oh yeah, I'll just give you my email, like all this other kind of stuff. And today people are like, ooh, you know, I don't know if I want to give you my personal email. People you, have multiple accounts now. You can see it here in Black Hat. Yeah. So many people don't have, don't want to reveal their real oh, yeah, their, name. Their names on the thing their are names, just like an emoji. Their companies, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. like um, Prince, The he has like a sign for his name instead oh. of like writing yeah. the name. Yeah. And they don't want to reveal their real email address. Definitely. Yeah. yeah you see it more and more. Nice. Um, Anything you're you're looking forward this year at Black Hat? Anything, any keywords, buzzwords that you've seen that thought were pretty interesting? Yes, we see more and more practicing. Actually, not only learning, practicing as well. Yeah. Uh, we also have another dimension of practicing, which is our cyber range, and we see it more and more tabletops, uh, CTFs, cyber ranges to actually showcase 
your uh, abilities and learn what is still missing right. from uh, the portfolio of information you already have. Yeah, and I, I think I've started to see like a, a change in, in the booths this year. We're getting, I think, hopefully for the better, hopefully it continues. It's kind of been coming through the last couple of years, but like less of these like big podium, like big screen type presentations to there's several booths that have like 10 hands-on stations where you can actually get in and play with the tools. And I think that's, I think that's super interesting and super powerful by getting like all these practitioners to hear like actual hands-on your software instead of just like a side slide deck demo pitch of what your Couldn't sales guy agree thinks. more. It is so much more personalized. Yeah. I totally agree with you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited for that, that yeah. shift. I, I think cool. that's, I mean, that's kind of like what we want to do. We want to get more people hands-on mm -hmm. with like cyber because, you know, we have such a shortage. And so for us, just exposing it to more people, they could decide early on, is this something I want to pursue? Is it not? And then so many people can make a living now with cyber stuff like penetration testing, exactly. bug bounties and things like that. It's exactly. it's crazy how the, we can provide this information to people in remote corners of the world. I completely and agree so, and it gives an, uh, an opportunity for people that are remote to, as you said, for example, participate in, participate in a bug bounty and um, get expert in this field by studying remotely. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I think it's it's an interesting thing because I think that's the only way, because cybersecurity professionals are pretty much understaffed across the board, mm -hmm. I think this is one of those only ways that it starts to help scale. I agree. Right, because it's just more training out there. Because I think back in the day, a lot of vendors had their own like training videos, but they were always like hidden in sites. And it's like, well, why wouldn't you want to mm -hmm. expose people mm -hmm. to your, your platform yeah. like freely um, and stuff. And so YouTube became super popular. Um, hopefully they don't start taking down videos, right. tutorials on hacking yeah. and things like yeah. that. Yeah, I but, agree. Um, I agree. Because that just that just helps that helps like scale, right? So like a lot of our platform, we've we've looked at it as kind of like certain generations are now consuming media in a very different mm -hmm. way, and so at Cyber we try to we try to take that and break it down into you know small format like 12, 14 minute chunks so that people can kind of go at their own pace. And I think that's. That's super powerful. So. I truly agree, and actually, I learn a lot from your website about self-paced learning. And again, it brings me back to the previous topic of just allowing people to create themselves um, another layer of expertise by studying remotely and in their own time. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, are you Excellent. guys you guys launching anything this week at Black Hat? You guys got any big no, announcements or anything? No, we're not. No, not in this uh, event. All right. Awesome. Okay. Well, Thank thanks you. Thanks for the chat. Appreciate it.